let's get back to the show. Well, I hope you are ready because we are back in black. Tonight it is black tuxedos sported by our dapper and dashing contestants. The tuxedos so generously provided courtesy of Periwinkle will really wow the crowd. These athletes, artists, actors, academics, musicians, and men really clean up well. So now let's ooh and ah over their handsomeness in this next pageant competition we call Tuxedo Time. <laughs> this next section of the show will include two on-stage questions. And as each young man is being escorted by one of their favorite females, we will share with you a letter that each contestant has written to their favorite ladies. So, contestant number one. Up first is Carlos Fonseca. <laughs> Dear Mom, you're loving. As Ed Sheehan wrote in a song, Lovin' Can Hurt. But in that song, he also wrote, Lovin' Can Heal. These lines can describe how, although I'm not always the best son, you still come to me with love, regardless of how I act. I know I'm not always the easiest to deal with, and neither are you, but through love, <laughs> we build a stronger relationship. You're the most influential teacher I have. I'm thankful for the many things you've taught me. Whenever I don't understand why things in life happen, I know I can always come to you for clarity. Every day you teach me a lesson I can implement in my life. Thanks to you, I have learned how to have a relationship with God, to live a healthy lifestyle through eating right and exercise, to do my chores, well, the ones that need work, and you've taught me to be accepting of others. As my mom, it's been your job to be a friend, caretaker, and role model of, for my life. Without you, I would feel lost, confused, and probably do a poor job of doing the dishes. Above all, you're my mom and one of the strongest women I've ever met in my entire life. Love, Carlos. So, Carlos, question number one. What do you believe is the hardest job when it comes to putting together an event like Mr. Pelican? I would say the, the lights, doing the, the stage and you know, Steve did a great job with the lights and the choreography, well, the music, I mean, and with the curtains and all that stuff. Okay. And the second question, why is community service important to our city? It's always important to give back because you know, it, 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 excuse me, it builds a unity within the community. Thank you. Contestant number two, Hayden Dintinger. <laughs> Dear Mom, I just want to say thank you for everything. I know I say that all the time, but I really do mean it. Thank you. In my infinite wisdom, I have a tendency to be a little arrogant about knowing everything, but I really do appreciate you letting me feel smart while constantly pushing, helping, and supporting from behind the scenes. I'm extremely grateful for you for goading me along while I feel frustrated or angry, and that happens so much that we both know I'd still be in a fight with my first grade teacher if left to my own devices. <laughs> Thanks for teaching me that respect is not a right, but to be earned, whether referring to my teachers, friends, or myself. And in contrast, thanks for teaching me to keep my mouth shut when I feel a lack of respect. Thank you for looking out for me. I've never had someone else hit me over the table manners, but keeping my elbows off the table is a habit I'm glad I formed. I'm glad you let me make my mistakes. For some reason being, not, for some reason being told not to touch an oven isn't as informational as touching one. And I'm even happier that you prevented me from making mistakes because shaving your eyebrows is a mistake you want someone else to make. <laughs> Finally, thank you for always having my best interest at heart. I know that unconditional love you have for me is one of a kind. Being a mom is a tough job, but someone has got to do it. I'm really happy that it was you who did it because I've been a pain in the butt and you're darn good at your job. Love, Hayden. Okay, Hayden, what Disney princess do you feel connected with most and why? 
<laughs> I feel the most connected with Belle because I do love books and I also feel like my teapots try to talk to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another tough one. If you could do one thing to improve the economy in Klamath Falls, what would you do? I would do what I could to increase the job market because we're not gonna improve any economy without increasing the job rates so that people can pump money back into this economy. Thank you, Hayden, good job. Contestant number three, Miguel Silva. My mother, my birth giver, the woman who yells at me for not turning the beans off on the stove. She has been through a lot with me and I can't thank her enough. No matter how many times she has gotten mad at me, I will always make fun of her accent. My, my dad is probably laughing at that, but don't laugh, Pops. You have it worse, I think. <laughs> she has taught me so much and taught me to be the person I am today. Many great lectures almost every, I may get lectures almost every day of my life and you may think I'm not listening because I'm on my phone, but I do. I listen to your words and I consider them. Thank you for all you have done, everything you will continue to do for me. I know it's hard to believe, but your little boy will be going to college soon. I'm very grateful to have you as my support system. I know you think I'm crazy for the dreams I have, and I know you have concerns about my drifting, but that's what I love, and I'm happy that you support it. I promise to never put you in a retirement home, and, <laughs> and I promise to never forget who had my back when no one else did. I love you, Mom. Sincerely, your loving son, Miguel. Okay, Miguel, question number one. If you were a cheeseburger, what part of it would you be and why? Dang, I, I think I'd be the cheese, because I think I'm pretty cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a tougher one. What is your definition of love? Love is something that you that you can't let go of, I think. It's something that you, you grasp and you hold tight, but you'll never let it go. I think that's what love is. Thank you. Now contestant number four, Bevan York. <laughs> Dear mom, Thank you for everything you have given me, both materially and spiritually. You truly are an amazing woman, and I do not tell you enough how much I love you and how much you've shaped my life. Without you, I would not be the person I am today. It's such an amazing and humbling feeling when you are able to take a step back and just examine your life in its entirety. You realize how the hardships, the highs and lows in everyone in your life has made you the person you are today. I feel like so many people are afraid to show their true emotion. They're afraid of being ridiculed or being viewed as soft by peers or friends. I wish I could have you forever, but unfortunately, I know that's not possible. Until then, I will make sure you understand how lucky I am to have you as my mom. Don't ever doubt that you didn't do enough for me or have a single ounce of regret. You are more than I could have asked for in a mother. Sincerely, with endless love from your number one fan, your son, Bevan. Okay, Bevan, what is your spirit animal? Uh, I'd say a dog. I, li I like to live in the moment. It's, it's... <laughs> and then, how do you feel about the KU remodel? <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting, pretty chaotic around the school. It'll be nice when it's finished and I'll be in college. <laughs> but other than that, it's great for the community, try to get people into the school. Thank you, Bevan.
contestant number five, Christian Rodriguez. <laughs> Dear mom, thank you. You've been there through my awkward stages. Well, now you've helped me conquer my fears. Thank you for supporting everything I try. You've really helped me succeed in my music. You've showed me everything I know. You've showed me strength. Mom, you are my biggest role model, and you've been there when I was at my low. We are in this together. I could never ask for anything better. You are truly the best. Your son, Captain Awkward, AKA Christian. <laughs> Okay, the first question. What are you doing personally to make Klamath Union a better school? Uh, personally, I'm just showing really positivity towards everyone, kindness, trying to be as sweet as I can to everyone, and not try to be as judgmental. <laughs> also working on the KU and U videos. <laughs> what is Oregon's best attraction in your opinion, and why? The wilderness, oh my gosh. Oh my. The trees, everything about outside. Oh my God, I love it. I love the air. <laughs> Just fresh air, it feels amazing. Oh. All right, thank you. Contestant number six, Ronan Rutherford Swan. Dear Mom, I cannot begin to tell you how much I love you. For the past 17 years of my life, you have done more for me than I will ever be able to return. Thank you for being my biggest fan and critic and for showing me what it means to love. You have the ability to cheer me up, even in my lowest times, and you can always put a smile on my face. You have always believed in me, even when nobody else did, and for that, I am eternally grateful. I could not have asked for a better mom to be with me throughout school, and I'm going to miss you like crazy next year. Thank you again for being the most loving, beautiful, understanding, and caring mom in the world. I love you. Love, Ronan. Okay, Ronan, first question. How would you describe a rainbow to a blind man? Um. I think that the best way to describe a rainbow would probably be to be like, uh, that didn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> probably to describe it as like a, like a real miracle. Uh, I don't like really understand how it perfectly makes the exact same thing every single time and I think that's really amazing. Um, <laughs> and they're just really nice. I don't, <laughs> I never really thought about that before. Here's another one. If you go out on a date, how do you feel about splitting the check? Um, I think it just depends on, like, if it's an actual date or something, because I feel fine. <laughs> like, if you're just going out with your friend or something, then split the check. But if it's like an actual date, uh, you gotta be a gentleman, so. Thank you, Ronan. <laughs> Contestant number seven, Gabe Hernandez. <laughs> Dear mom, even though I have many opportunities to tell you this, I'll tell you this now. I have no idea where our family would be without your guidance. I wish I could describe how much we love you, but it can't be done. You have done so much for our family. Even if we are going through hard times, you make sure we can have the best. I know I never say it or make it seem like it, but I love you. Thank you always for always believing in me. At times I always feel down because I feel I can't do something, but then you go and post something on Facebook or brag to people about how great I am at something. This always makes me feel better. As I get older, I realize more and more how much you've done for me and continue to do every day. Thank you for giving me everything. From the simplest things to things that would put stress on you, you've always given me what I wanted or needed. You have sacrificed so much in order to give me a better life than you had when you were a kid. It is crazy to think the amount of love a human can have. 
Mother seems to prove it every day. I don't know where I would be without yours or my dad's guidance. You two show me what it is to be a good person. I'm glad you have guided me in the path of being a good person. Because of you, I am well disciplined and respected by others. Without you, I probably wouldn't be the same person. You inspire me every day to treat people right and respect them. I'm proud to have you as a mother. I will never be able to repay you for what you've done for me and my siblings. Lastly, Mom, I want to tell you how I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the times I fought with you, for the times I've let you down, and for the times I chose friends and other things over you. Sometimes I tend to lose sight of the things that are most important. I never meant to fight with you when you told me I couldn't go out that one night because you wanted me home. You, <laughs> you truly mean so much to me, and I don't express it enough, and I certainly don't prove it when I leave you doing the dishes to go to a game. A lot of the time, especially lately, you deserve someone who pays more attention to the things that you do. I hope that by the time I'm older, you can someday forgive me for this. Again, thank you. Even though it's only two words, I will never be able to say them enough. I truly am lucky to have you as my mother. I know everyone says it, but you are the best mom. I love you and our family so much. I would never give you guys up for anything. I love you, mom. Love, Gabe. So Gabe, are you an over-obsessive dog lover or a crazy cat lady? Definitely a, a dog lover. Cats are just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> In 10 years from now, how will you look back and know you made it? Uh, I will look back and see my family, and I don't know how to put this into words, but I'll see my family and how successful our family will be because of me and other relatives my age. Thank you, Gabe. Thank you. Now contestant number eight, Michael Ferns. Dear mom, I would personally like to thank you for everything that you've done for me. You are such an amazing person, and I'm so incredibly lucky to have you in my life. I could not ask for anyone else to be the most important and amazing role model that you are in my life. I bet you never could have imagined 16 years ago that I would be up here on this stage tonight. Your little boy, whose first great idea was to try and eat a curling iron, <laughs> could you have imagined that your little boy, who forgot gets everything, would be up on this stage? Could you have imagined that your little boy, who may frustrate you at times, but always tries his hardest to make you happy, would be on this stage showcasing his beautiful mom? I hope that I am the son that you are proud of, and I hope that I am able to make you proud tonight. I love you, your son, Michael. Michael, what do you think is one thing money can't buy? Um, I think love is something that money can't buy. It's just a thing that sprouts between two people and it just really forms. Who is Mr. Pelican? Mr. Pelican is a person that embodies all that is amazing about KU and that how spectacular they are and how talented and athletic and educated. Thank you very much. Now contestant number nine, Noe Macias. <laughs> Dear Mom, here we are again. I'm sorry I'm forcing you to stand up here again, but I mean, look at me. Definitely worth it. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, would you? All joking aside, thank you. It's been an amazing last couple of years. You've opened up opportunities for me that have changed my life. Thanks to you, I have become the young man I am today. You have taught me lessons that I will never forget. No matter what I do after this, I know that you will be there for me. You've taught me to find value in everything I have. Even when you're in a seemingly hopeless situation, you always find a way to make things right. You've taught me the importance of valuing family because they are the ones that will be there for me no matter what. It's also official. You're the only woman I need in my life. 
So I've decided that I'm not moving out, considering that was your plan all along. <laughs> I mean, seriously, how you, can you get rid of me? On a more serious note, I can't thank you enough. I don't know who I would be right now if it wasn't for you. You saw what I could become, and you loved and nourished that. I don't think I could ever repay you enough for all the time you've put in. I can assure you, though, I will try. I don't know how, and I don't know when, but I will buy you that wonderful house I always joke about. I love you, Mom. Love, Noe. Okay, Noe, what is your favorite memory at Klamath Union? I'd say that my favorite memories of Klamath Union are probably during cross country because those are really fun trips and especially um, my junior year when we went to Seaside. That was a really good trip, especially if you were there. Uh, because everyone would know the jokes, but yeah. <laughs> if you had five minutes with the current president of the United States, what would you talk to him about? Okay. <laughs> I'd ask him, I'd ask him what he thought about his presidency. If he feels that, if he felt that he left behind a legacy and he, if he had any regrets in, what would he change if he had another chance? Thank you, Noe. Contestant number 10, Nils Detschler. <laughs> Dear host mom, with this letter I want to thank you for being here for me for the last couple of months. I'm so happy you agreed to host me for a whole year and that I am in this awesome community. You are the best mom I could have gotten and I enjoy every second you are around. With you I always have fun and there are no limits. I can talk with you about everything and you always understand and help me, although sometimes it's even hard for you. <laughs> you also support me in all matters and give me rides whenever I need one, which is basically every time since I'm always hurt somehow or need something from Walmart. <laughs> but we need to work on your driving skills in the snow. <laughs> you also give me my freedom and we've managed to not get into an argument yet, which is unusual for me because I always get into arguments with people. You always make me happy with your entertaining nature, and even if I'm mad, you can make me smile. I had a wonderful Thanksgiving and Christmas with you, and you showed me the American way of celebrating it. Not only are you the best mom, you are also the best shopping buddy and the quickest present buyer I know. <laughs> you also got me to that point where I can say I enjoy hiking, something I've never done in the past and never thought I would enjoy because, yeah, it's hiking. <laughs> I also want to thank you for keeping me in shape. Your cooking is absolutely delightful and healthy, since I can't forget the vegetables on my plate. Besides that, I want to thank you for supporting me in my musical career. As a fact, I can say I'm really lucky with you as my host mom, because you are simply the best. I know I may not always be the best host son, but you always remain calm and treat me like your real son. I hope that the remaining months are going to be like the ones I've already experienced here, and that we will have a good time, until sadly, I have to go back to Germany. Much love, your host son, Nils. Do you know who the Avengers are? <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Okay, good. Okay. If all of the Avengers are running for president, who do you vote for? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, hmm. I mean, I like Hulk, but he's pretty aggressive sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, but basically, yeah, I think he's the coolest one, so I would go for Hulk, yeah. Okay, okay. How do you think technology is affecting your generation's ability to communicate and relate to older generations? I think with um, social media nowadays, it's, it's pretty easy to communicate. I mean, when I'm going back to Germany, I will always text my friends over Facebook, for example, and, or like WhatsApp. And so I guess everything's possible. And I think, I mean, when you look back and early, earlier, you just had like letters and stuff. And I, w I, w I guess over the, from Europe to America, that w wouldn't be possible. So I'm pretty happy about social media right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Neil.
contestant number 11, Tanner York. <laughs> Dear Mom, for 18 years you have guided and taught me everything I've needed to know to live a successful and happy life. The dedication you give to whatever you do is absolutely astounding and inspiring to watch. I hope to grow up and be at least half the person you are. For 18 years, you have gotten to deal with your little Nene. From running around the neighborhood naked to taking apart every object I could with my screwdriver, all while living in a house of three boys whose thoughts revolved around motorcycles, boats, and fixing everything. 18 years of my amazing parents working together to raise two boys. Everything you have given me, all the great times, the bad times, and the rest could not be better. I am thankful for every moment. I could never ask for a better mother with all my heart. Thank you. Love your favorite, Tanner. <laughs> Tanner, when does a boy become a man? A boy becomes a man when he first realizes and follows through with what he believes in. Nice. Why do you think Mr. Pelican is an important event to hold every year? Especially in a time like this when we have such crazy stuff happening at the remodel, it brings our entire school together along with many alumni and other people around town just to have fun. Thank you. Contestant number 12, Sam Schultz. Dear Mom, well, Mom, I guess this is the last hurrah you and I will have together in my high school era. It's been a wild ride, hasn't it? I just want you to know nothing you do is overlooked, from the smallest things like coming to every basketball game to reminding me to apply for scholarships and keep my grades up. I know without a doubt that I would not have been as well off if I was to have a different parent. You had the task of raising me by yourself, and you did it better than most people who raised their children together. Growing up, I always had what I needed and even most things I wanted. I always had toys and games to play, always had food to eat, and always had an awesome parent to go to when I was down or had problems. You've been there th for me through thick and thin, no matter what. And I will always be here for you through it too. I hope to be as good as parent to my children as you are to me. Love, Sam. Sam, what makes you unique? Do I take this? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what makes me unique is how much I love getting involved. Everything I can at school, everything I can be in, everything I can be a part of, I always want to be involved in everything. Um, every club, every society, every sport that I can do, I try and get involved in. I think that's what makes me unique. What do you think is the hardest part of being a teenager today? I think the hardest part of being a teenager is trying to learn to grow up. And growing up seems easier than it is, but when you're a teenager, your parents let you get away with a lot of things that they shouldn't. And, <laughs> and um, that point of learning when to do that and when to grow up and not do those activities or things anymore. Thanks, Sam. Well, audience, there you have our 12 magnificent young men competing for the oh-so-sought-after title of Mr. Pelican 2016. Let's give them another warm round of applause for their poise under pressure. I want to take a moment to tell you that after the contestants' personal interviews with the judges, our contestants were fired up for the show. Many of our contestants concurred on how much they enjoyed and appreciated the sincere investment the judges made in each of them. The perspective of our judges was not to grill these guys by putting them on the hot seat, but to visit with the contestants, giving them a platform to talk about their community involvement. 
every judge wanted to give each contestant the opportunity to shine. Please honor these fine judges with a round of applause yet again for their generosity in sharing their time, talent, and enthusiasm with our young people. The crowning and Mr. Pelican presentation is about to occur momentarily. However, right now we are fortunate to have our future Mr. Pelicans with us. Please welcome a few kindergartners from every elementary school, and we first welcome Conger Elementary. Thomas, what are you afraid of? The dark. Sean, what's your favorite animal? Tigers. Wonderful. All right, Phoenix, what do you want to be when you grow up? A fighter fighter. <laughs> and Parker, what do you want to be when you grow up? Just like my dad. <laughs> what is your favorite sport? Baseball. <laughs> and now we welcome Roosevelt to the stage. your favorite superhero? Spider-Man. <laughs> Sawyer, what's your favorite sport? Baseball. Why? Because I hit a ball. <laughs> if, if I gave you a hundred dollars, what would you buy? Okay, if you were in Mr. Pelican, what would your talent be? Mm, skateboarding? Oh. <laughs> Alright, well, if you were in Mr. Pelican, what would your talent be? Biking! <laughs> Alright, Tyler, what is your favorite sport? Soccer. Oh. Thank you. You like? What's your favorite game to play? Tag. <laughs> we now welcome Pelican to the stage. Okay, so when you're in Mr. Pelican, what is going to be your talent? Whistling and snapping. <laughs> Who's your favorite superhero? Spider-Man. <laughs> okay, Jeremiah, so what is your talent? Um, piano and a ukulele and a guitar. Oh. 
All right. What's your favorite thing to do? Ride a scooter. <laughs> All right, Bryson. What do you want to be when you grow up? A cop. Why do you want to be a cop? Because my dad's a cop. <laughs> All right, Ashton, what's going to be your special talent when you do Mr. Pelican? A ninja flip. Do you want to do a ninja flip for us right now? Yes. You got it. You got it. Do it. <laughs> How cute are these future Mr. Pelican contestants? Let's have one. So, can you guys hear me? Yeah? Okay. Um, we're going off script because we have a few people that we'd like to thank from the bottom of our hearts with Mr. Pelican. And, and the people we want to thank or would like to come up to the stage are Kylie Stackpole. <laughs> Kylie Souders. Ashley Ferns, and Paige Anna Seabar. And we have two more for two special ladies that we would like to thank as well, Miss Heron and Mrs. Cole. Yes, we just got told we have to get back on script now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, the big moment has arrived. But first, we would like to announce that with our Miracle Minute, we raised just under $1,100 for Hayden. A big thank you to everyone who donated. So let's start rewarding these guys for their talents, involvement, and efforts. We plan to give awards away for scholarship, talent, Mr. Congeniality, second runner-up, first runner-up, and of course, Mr. Pelican 2016. To assist us in the presentation tonight is our very own Pelican Pete. It is important to note that tonight's winners combined will receive $600 in total scholarship money. Thanks to everyone who contributed to the scholarship funds for our young men here tonight. The generosity and commitment to the causes, concerns, dreams, and dedication of the young people is impressive. It is no secret that giving these scholarship dollars makes an enormous difference in advancing education for all our winners. Your generous scholarship donations will afford these young citizens opportunities to achieve good things as they further their education and become KU alumni. Now, on to the awards. The 2016 Mr. Pelican Scholarship Award is being given to recognize the exceptional academic pursuits and achievements of its winner. This person sets the bar very high for scholarly excellence, and tonight we wish to salute his years of commitment to his studies and the pursuit of learning. He's an inspiration and a credit to KU. The winner of the Scholarship Award is Hayden Dentiger. is the Talent Award, which is being given to the young man who scored the highest in the talent competition this evening. It is a special award to recognize his excellence in performance and to laud his exceptional talent, evidence of the, of the much discipline and dedication it takes for talent. The winner of the Talent Award, judges, may we have the scorecard, please? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm like, what are you trying to write that in? I know, I'm like, what are you, what are you, what are you? Okay, okay, we'll open this. 
The envelope, please, Mrs. Heron. The talent winner is Gabe Hernandez. Our last award to be given before the crowning of Mr. Pelican is for Mr. Congeniality. Each of the contestants voted on whom they felt best exhibits a friendly, warm, and congenial personality to each and every contestant. They voted for the person who is both interested in and supports the participation of others in the contest most wholeheartedly and promotes the Mr. Pelican pageant experience to others. This great guy has earned the praise of his peers. The winner of Mr. Congeniality Award for 2016 is Gabe Hernandez. Now is the moment you've all been waiting for, and me too, for the official coronation of Klamath Union High School's Mr. Pelican of 2016. Our second runner-up is Niels Detschler. <laughs> Okay, our first runner-up is Sam Schultz. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. And our winner of the title of Mr. Pelican 2016 is Hayden Dentinger. everyone for <laughs> their chest bumping. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming and supporting our fine young men and Hayden Krebin. Put us on your calendar for next year and join us in one last round of applause as these extraordinary young men take a final group bow. We would like to give a big thank you to Ashley Ferns and Kylie Souders and the rest of the ASB crew for their hard work in bringing us Mr. Pelican. Our 2016 Mr. Pelican contestants will gather for one last hurrah song. Contestants will meet everyone in the lobby after this. Please know audience members on the stage. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.